Boom. Dream synth. I've got this macro at cycle marker. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody, my very dear audio friends around the world. Welcome back to my studio, or so Poland, my name is Paul. This is my humble YouTube channel and another video of mine. Guys, I'm not gonna start this episode regularly, because like two hours ago, three hours ago, two Russian rockets hit actually Polish soil in the east. Well, it does not make me particularly focused maybe on some things, but I will make a video for you. I'm gonna try to do my best to make it fun, informative for you as always. And please, if by any chance you're supporting what Russia is doing right now, or you're a supporter of President Putin's actions, I need you to leave this channel right away. I'm not gonna discuss it with you. This is not a political channel, but please, this is not. A place for you. And now, guys, this. This. Can I? Yeah, I can. This is what we're gonna be talking about today, my friends. This is one of my iPads mini running the app called MetaGrid Pro, guys. If by any chance, by any reason, you haven't heard about that, guys, you have to really know it. Because I'm gonna tell you something in the very start of the vid. If there was one studio controller of any kind I was about to choose as my only one, I would choose MetaGrid Pro at all times. And I'm gonna show you why and how exactly, and that's gonna all happen today. Let's go. Okay, guys, so you're gonna see the second camera here because I want to really physically show you my iPads with Metagrids running on both of them. And remember that today's video is just barely scratching the surface of what's there. I'm gonna simply try to show you on a very living example of my own grids how Metagrid works, what can it do for you, and then I'm gonna show you some under the hood stuff, like how to configure it, how to set up this thing, how to make it do what we want it to do, because it's pure, pure fun. And the speed, ah, you're gonna see in a minute, guys. Okay, these are my grids. And all the buttons you're seeing here, we're gonna talk about them, let's say, in detail a bit. But you should know in the beginning that they all can be key shortcuts, mouse clicks starting from version 1.2, they can be text input, they can be navigation through your grids, they can be MIDI commands, and more, and all the combinations of these creating really powerful macros, automating a lot of work for you, my friend. And I have organized my grids the way that I've got some file commands here. So for example, I can open a project in my new endo, I can close the project, I can save templates, import audio, I can, ah, here's the window for import audio, uh, I can import OMF or AAF files, yeah, it's the same separate window for this. Then I've got some global setup and some panels of my new window, which is, for example, ADR panel or automation panel, let's close them, quantize panel, separate transport panel, Control room, which is disabled for now. Screen keyboard. Here's the mix down window, for example. And of course, a mixer window, a video window, which is over there, and so on, and so on, and so on. Guys, do you imagine how many key shortcuts I would have to prepare for this, or how many times would I have to click somewhere in the menus and stuff? Instead of this, I can give it a certain name, and I can give it a certain icon. So that's the easiest, most comprehensive, the fastest way I know to launch commands in my Nuendo, but it's gonna work with every software you wish. <laughs> Here in the center, I've got some audio tracks to be added, for example, or MIDI tracks to be added. I can add groups, I can add folders, I can add FX channels to select the tracks. 
I can add a video track. Uh, this is my effects track. Yeah, this is a video track. Of course, I can delete my tracks here. Or, if I feel like, I can duplicate them like this. I can lock or unlock them or enable, disable them. Let's record something now. Boom, like this. Yeah, so this is a stereo track. I can convert it to mono, for example. Okay, let's delete this. And let's del delete these. Mm, I can hide, of course, my track. Mm, ah, let's show them. Um, or I can create versions or delete versions of track. I can navigate through my versions of track. Mm, <laughs> guys, then on the very right, I've got my mixer commands. I can do undo and redo for my mixer. I can load or save channel settings. My channel strips can be loaded or, or saved. I can bypass all insert or inserts on my master. I can bypass my sands or just my strip. Then I can freeze and un unfreeze my track. I can toggle time base on my tracks. Um, of course, channel settings to be edited or VST instruments to be mm, edited. What else? I can solo mute, read, write separate tracks or the whole project through the project globally here. And maybe let's... Uh, freezing. Okay, let's create an instrument track. I've got my VSTIs here, actually. I'm going to talk about it in a second. For now, let's just launch Arturia Pigments. Did you see this? <laughs> I really love it, guys. I, I know I'm like a kid with this, but I so friggin' love it. Anyway, we've got our instrument. Let's go to the left new window screen, main one. So I told you I can freeze this. Yep, I did. For undo, I use normal control Z. Uh, I can unfreeze as well. And I can edit vst instrument like this mm. of course i can sign controllers here on my little launch key innovation guys and yeah that's it for the right screen let's say and just getting under the hood a bit what you're gonna see when i do the edit mode when i swipe right from here is that for each of these there's a so-called macro here and I've got some integrations. That means that I've got ready commands taken from Cubase, not Nuendo, but many, if not most of them, of this Cubase integration. It works with Nuendo. So I simply choose an appropriate uh, Cubase command. Here it's just new, new, simply new project. I just need to select it from the menu on iPad, which is corresponding with my DAW menu, let's say in 80%, 75%, because there are still some differences between Cubase and New Window. And also what I can do is, I can, for example, take this preferences, and here is the key command, and I enter this command in key commands in my New Window, so I can launch a key command also to launch mm, something I need in my New Window like preferences, like this. So guys, really, this makes me incredibly fast in my DAW, and I haven't just actually started, because I want to get to my left iPad, which is an editing one, because these are some global things, like global operations on tracks, on projects, and mixer, let's say, and some preferences and panels. But lots of editing stuff is going on on my left iPad. And I've got also groups of buttons here. Here are my automation buttons. Here are my fade in, fade out, crossfade, cut head, cut tail operations on audio tracks, editing audio, slicing, cutting audio tracks. Then I can select things here or I can move them to cursor. I can make some ripple operations. I can close gaps. I can group or ungroup my tracks. I can set even spaces between my tracks and stuff. Here I've got some plugins for my audio tracks that I can do in direct offline processing mode in Nuendo and Cubase, which is really great. So I've got my Kerhoff, I've got some of my uh, Isotope RX 10 operations and stuff. This is mainly for film dialogue, I would say. Then I can have some more operations for my audio, like bouncing, adding gain. Uh, ah, 
I'm gonna show you like this. For example, I can bounce, that was fast, right? I'm gonna show you. Because that was a macro, actually. What I do is that I do bounce command, I make a very short pause, and then I hit enter to confirm the bounce. Normally, it goes like this. Bounce selection and replace enter. Here it goes like this, my friends. Then I can add gain, as I told you. I can change the pitch. I can change the time. I can reverse the audio. I can invert face. I can do the stereo flip of the file. Also with enter, it's a short macro. So a chain of commands. Then I can detect silence, remove offset, resample, randomize. I can generate test tone like this. Pink noise. Woo! generated and I can calculate uh, hit points or I can slice it marker and remove markers for my hit points then guys I've got some MIDI operations for my MIDI tracks so I can bounce my MIDI I can transpose I can change velocity I can fix my velocity I can quantize or quantize only length or ends of the files I can, I can reset my MIDI I can do legato I can reverse delete doubles I can delete any CC on the track or globally in the project. I can delete uh, certain notes. I can uh, enter the score editor or drum editor, or I can launch expression maps. Guys, I've got just two iPads for everything in every department of Nuendo work I'm doing on everyday basis. Yeah, because probably I'm some kind of a jack of all trades. You say that in English, right? So I do film posts, I do music, I do audio books, uh, I do game audio and stuff. So this is like really the basics of the basics of each operation you can think of in Nuendo. But guys, this is not all. Don't think it is because I've got some more macros. These are interesting. I'm gonna show you just one of my macros. Look, I'm gonna make my audio like this. I'm gonna create a marker track. And now normally what I would do, select range marker, select range marker, select range marker and stuff. I don't have to do this. Why? Because I've got this macro at cycle marker. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yes, what's this? Let me show you. I select event under cursor. I make a short pause for new window. Then I press P, so I select a region. Uh, I create a region from the audio clip. Then I insert cycle marker. Then I press N, so I select the end of the event and I press N again. So I just select the beginning of the next event. And then I'm ready to repeat the cycle and go to select events under cursor. And that's a cycle of macros that lets me create um, my cycle markers for exporting really quickly, which is a vital function when you do game audio, my friend. This is just one of my macros you can see here. And one of my grids, these are just two grids. I have more of them because for example, this is what I really love. These are all my plugins for mixing, mastering, sound design, and restoration and also VST ins instruments. I have shown this to you before. And guys, these are my inserts. So, boom. This is my EQPA uh, 1A by Acoustica Audio. This is my TOD. This is my whatever, etc., etc., etc. Guys, I'm not gonna show you everything. Of course, I can delete as well if I feel like. I'm not gonna click all of them. You just have to believe me that they work. I've made departments like Mix, Master, Design, Restore, and I've got groups, EQ, Smart Plugins, Compressors, Limiters, Analyzers, and then Reverbs, Enhancers, Saturators, Imagers, and other, etc., etc., etc. It's all for stereo, mono and also some of the plugins do 5.1 these are also separate plugins for my 5.1 road routings and guys let's get back to the mix stereo and what's the macro that lets me do this because also 
I don't even have to tell you probably how fast I am when mixing and making decisions on my chains. I don't have to click a mouse. I don't have to use a keyboard. I just have to click single thing on my iPad and it's there and it's visually represented in front of my eyes. And the macro for this is that first I do mouse click. It's a new function in uh, Metagrid Pro 1.2. Uh, before that I was using a mouse emulator that uh, let me use my number uh, keyboard one to emulate the mouse click and I had the same keystroke on my Metagrid Pro. Now it's just a mouse click, then I write the name of the plugin and then I press enter. So it's like recreating my regular behavior. Click, write the name, press enter. But I don't have to lose my time for this. So yes, I did spend some time on configuring my Metagrids Pro, but I took this time back multiple times. Yes, totally. Guys, then I've got my VSTIs. I have also shown you this. What I can do with this is that I choose oh, Dream Synth. It's here. Also, it's a simple macro. What I do is that I press Shift, Control and P, which gives me the window for my track presets. Then I have to press Tab three times to be in the field of searching the name of the preset. Then I write Dream Synth. Then I have to press Tab, also Down and Enter to add track. You see, it's all here. But I don't have to do it manually, or I don't have to create instrument track every time and uh, choosing the track and, uh, and so on. No, this is so much more convenient, faster, and it's also uh, putting my things and my thinking in order because it's really great to have some things visually represented like this. It really helps me a lot organize my work more and somehow yes i am an organized a well-organized person in the studio so this is my game guys this is the fastest really the fastest um, run through metagrid pro to show you that this is a really an amazing controller and no this video has not been sponsored by anybody but um, you can find um, some tutorials i made for metagrid pro on the Metagrid Pro uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to link it here now. And yes, these were paid, but it's interesting. It's not that I came to them and asked, hey, can I do tutorials for you? No, actually, Psamek, um, the CEO and the main maker of uh, Metagrid Pro, he came to me and asked, would you, Paul, make some tutorials for Metagrid first version one and then Metagrid Pro? And I did not hesitate because, guys, really, this is the most amazing breakthrough um, in my studio work for years in control uh, uh, area. And guys, uh, I had times when I had no studio, my studio, my two studios before <laughs> uh, was flooded and I had to work from home and I had only a pair of headphones, an interface, a computer, and two of my metal grids. The rest was packed up in the boxes, but I had to grab my metal grids. Let's try to sum it all up quickly. Well, I have summed the things up already, maybe somehow, but you know, at the very end, let's ask a question. Is Metagrid Pro for me? And my answer, and I'm deeply, really deeply convinced it's like that, this is for everybody. Of course, you have to spend some time to adjust it to your needs, though you have also some ready-made grids for main DOS and some other like graphic software like Adobe software and stuff. You've got ready-made grids also, but if you want to really make it your way, of course, you have to customize it. The good news is probably somehow that I'm gonna share in some form my grids for Cubase and Nuendo. I hope that's gonna happen soon. I have to talk to Psamek about it. And guys, anyway, no matter how much time you're gonna spend on creating your grids or adapting your grids, all this time will be multiplied and will get back to you as your advantage. 
in your workplace and in your all workflows because this is an amazing time machine even i would say for speeding the things up this is what metagrid pro is made for and it excelled at it uh, in an unprecedented way and maybe again congratulations to the metagrid pro team for this amazing thing also version 1.2 is amazing lots of great things happened i've got it like for three days and guys you have to try it out if you haven't already and sharing this is kind of a threat for me because so far it has been my advantage on the local market. I was a really fast and efficient guy in some things and this was my secret. Now let me get back to this and tweak it more. Bye. See you soon.